Yandane Godadagoda. Welcome to Shark Bay. My name's Capes and this is my daughter Helena. And we are with Woolagur and Yinda Eco Cultural Adventures. And we are based in the magnificent Shark Bay World Heritage Area. Tonight we'll introduce you to Godadagoda. We'll also let you know about our business. Okay. We really want to encourage visitors to come and visit and check us out here in Gudadaguda, the Shark Bay World Heritage Area. Learn about us and learn about our beautiful backyard, eh? Yep. Now, what we're going to do first is you can see we've got three fish right here. These are in our local language called Mulgada. They are caught locally here by a local Aboriginal net fisherman, Brother Gavin Toland and Brother Glenn Holt. They know more about this backyard, the salt water here, than most people. And what they generally don't know, we explain, is probably not worth knowing. What we're going to do tonight, Helena and me, we are going to cook these on this beautiful bed of coals. Okay, these fish, these mulgara, these are our favourite fish. Okay, we're going to cook those whole. They haven't been cleaned. The stomach and intestines are still inside. The scales are still on there. And what we're going to do, could you hold that stick for me, please, Elena? Sure. Elena's my assistant. Be careful there, don't fall off that. And what we're going to do is place these very gently, excuse me, and the head is facing into the heat. All right, like that. Like that. And like that. As I said before, these are going to cook in their own juice. They haven't been scaled, they haven't been cleaned. Okay? This wood that we've got, this wood is really good firewood. And this wood is what we call wanyu. It comes from an acacia tree that grows in this red sand country. It's a bit hot. It comes from this red sand country. And this red sand country here represents the desert energy. We call this Ududu Maniwadi, red sand country. Over there, you can see the beautiful light shimmering off this little lagoon. That's a salt water uh, creek, sorry, that runs into the little lagoon here. It's one of our beautiful marine ecosystems here. Okay, these are a habitat for beautiful fish, shellfish, and the beautiful mangroves there, they, they're a natural filter system that filters the water. There's no pollution here. Everything's quite pristine, and that's the way we like it. And we really invite um, visitors from Australia and from overseas. But our Australians, we would like you guys to come and check our backyard out, learn about our Aboriginal culture and history, and learn about this place we call Gudadagoda. Gudadagoda means two waters. And it's in reference, eh, Helena, to the two bays that dominate the landscape. And this place, Gudadagoda, has been traditional homelands for two Aboriginal groups, Nanda and Mulgana. And they have called, I should say, we have called this place home for over 20,000 years. The salt water you see here that dominates the bay has only been here probably within the last seven or so thousand years. 10,000 years ago, there was no salt water here. It was about 130 kilometers west of us during the last ice age. As the ice melted, the oceans rose and it filled the bays with water. And so today we are called salt water people because we live near the ocean. But we do have this beautiful red sand, don't we, Helena? Mm -hmm. Feel that, bub? Beautiful red sand representing the desert. So we have the desert energy and we have the salt water energy. This place looks very good, but we say, as Aboriginal people, it's not what this place looks like. It's what it feels like. And we want people that come here for a visit, whether it's five minutes, five days, five years, we want you to feel the energy here in Gudadagoda. We want you to feel that red sand country. We want you to fill your belly with the fresh air. We say it's like a healing place, eh? Yeah. Makes you feel good inside. Makes you feel good. You feel good? Yeah. Yeah. Makes you happy. I feel really good. Always good when I can come out and do this. Tonight, me and Helena, or Helena and me, um, we're going to explain some of our creation stories here in Gudadagoda. 
And as I said before, we're going to explain what our Aboriginal connection is to this place. So I come this way. Now, we'll keep an eye on those fish there, as you can see. That's quite hot there, probably might be a little bit too hot, but that should be okay. All right. Fire, we call fire garla in our ancient cultures and including our own Aboriginal culture. Fire is very, very important. We respect fire and we believe fire is a living energy. It's a living spirit. And we say that because like us, fire needs oxygen to survive. We respect it. And one of the other ways we respect fire is you put a fire, understand the wind, where the wind coming from, if there's no wind, where to put your fire. Also, the type of wood that you need. So I mentioned before, this is an acacia we call one you. And that wood is really, really good wood. So you want a good fire, you need to have good wood. Because you got good wood, you'll get good coals. Like, and this is good for cooking on, burn your medicine, keep you warm, give you light. All right, so beautiful wood there. Now, as I mentioned before, Aboriginal people, my ancestors have been in this country for over 20,000 years. In this part of Australia, this place we call Gudadagud. Where we are tonight is one of our old Aboriginal places where a lot of our ancestors have camped here on the edge of that creek, had the fire like this, cooked fish like that. All right. Now, before we was saltwater people, and when you travel through this place, you'll see ancient lagoons like this, but you'll see places where the water has disappeared and you're like a kind of clay pan. These clay pans are called biridas or birida. And we believe that they are the footsteps of our creators that came down here and give us Aboriginal law to be able to look after this place we call Gudadaguda. Because our law is like a, the oldest conservation framework on the planet. It's always it's the law of the land, not law of man. And it's always about making sure that we respect nature or country, or as we call it, Ngura. So that's our number one job. And tourism allows us to be able to do that. It keeps us on country, all right, and allows us to look after country, allows us to keep our stories, introduce our kids to their culture, all right, so they know their cultural responsibilities and their cultural identity about looking after country. So these Beridas, or Birida, as I said, they are the ancient footsteps of our creator that came down here and travelled through country and give us our Aboriginal law. The law has been here so that we can look after country. Now when the water was all uh, fresh water, um, we have a story about our salt water story and that involves a lizard we call Jabi, or the thorny devil lizard. And uh, our story is that before that lizard had thorns, he was a handsome, beautiful, handsome lizard. Very fast, beautiful, smooth skin. And he used to be here. And that fellow used to also drink the water from the water hole. But he used to be too greedy and then he drank too much water. And all the other animals, they didn't like that. And so they yadded no jubby. They told him off for being too greedy, eh? And not respecting nature. But when they did that, that lizard got a bit angry with them. And when he got angry, he done a gumbu in the water. Gumbu in our culture it means to do a pee. And when he did that, the water turned salty and turned no good. So as part of that lizard's punishment for not respecting country, he's now no longer allowed to drink water. And on his skin, he's got all these thorns, make him look ugly. And all the other animals, they see that fellow and they say, he'd been punished because they can see all them thorns. And today, that lizard is very slow. He's no longer fast and he's no longer allowed to drink water. So you'll never see that lizard drinking water. What he does is he puts his feet there and he pumps the water up in through his capillaries into his mouth. And he's only allowed to eat mingers or ants too. That lizard looks very dangerous, eh? But he's not dangerous, he's a winyard, he's weak. And we always say, you never take that lizard, that thorny devil from the place where you find him. If you take him from where you find him, you break his connection to country and he'll die and that's no good. So always we tell our kids, Pick him up, have a look at him, but put him down where you find him. All right? And that's our saltwater story. 
And if you look way down the bottom, there's the emu walking across. I'm not sure if you can get that shot, walking across the creek. So these emus like to cross here. In the morning they'll come across and in the afternoon they'll go back. Saltwater emu from Gudadaguda. All right. What we can do is if you come back over this way, Helena, come with me, please. We're going to check these fish, so just be careful of the fire. Come and stand up here. Dad will check these. You can smell them. Oh, I smell good too. Now, which one did I put on first, bud? Stand over there. I think it was that one. This one here on the end? Yeah. All right, so I'll turn him over. Bill. Oh, look at that. So that's cooking there, nice yellow fat coming out. Yeah. And when you cook them like this, as I said, oh, lovely. This fella's name is Mulgada, our Aboriginal language name, Mulgada. That's our favourite Aboriginal fish. On all of our families and everyone, they ask us. Shark Bay Mullet, Shark Bay Mulgada, is revered all over Western Australia, all over from the desert to the north, to the south. All of our family, that's the first thing they ask. Any mulgara, any mullet? Yeah, and then once they're cooked, what we'll do is we'll put them on this bed of leaves. These leaves are taken from a ngaya tree or a wattle tree. We call those our eco plates, our eco plates. If you go in closer, you can hear the, you can hear the fish sizzling. Now, what we are going to do, we're going to explain, come this way, Helena. We're going to explain a saltwater turtle dreaming story. We call Buyangura Wangarenyana. Buyangura is our turtle. And we say in our story that the turtle used to walk on land. The turtle used to walk on land on four legs. Okay? He had no shell on his back. And that turtle, Buyangura, used to walk along the shoreline and he used to look for berries which get washed in and out with the tide. And Buyangura, the turtle, would go in further into the water looking for these berries. And all the other animals used to watch the turtle, Buyangura. And they used to say, be careful, Buyangura. You're getting too greedy for the berries. You might get stuck in the water. You fall in there in that widia, you might get stuck in the muga. Muga means deep water but the turtle didn't listen eh? and he kept going in looking for the berries until one day he slipped and got caught in the water and so today and so today we'll draw um, a turtle here and so today you can see the turtle all right and the turtle now that's his flipper there bud the turtle there all right is stuck in the ocean and today's legs have turned into this flippers, like that. All right, and on his back, you will see the turtle now has this shell, like that. And the pattern of that shell represents the berry that the turtle used to eat. And so we say in our story that the turtle carries a shell as a reminder that he's been punished for being too greedy for that berry. Now we say this turtle, even though it's in the ocean, this turtle is a land animal. And we say that because, where's the turtle born? It's born on the land. The turtle's born on land. When the body, when the turtle dies in the ocean, the body gets washed up to the beach. And that's the spirit of the turtle coming back to the land where he come from. Buyangura, from land. So we say the turtle is a land animal, but he's just stuck in the ocean as part of his punishment, once again for not respecting country. That's our saltwater turtle dreaming from Gudadaguda. These stories come from this country, Gudadaguda, so we can share those with you. We can share those stories with you. 
And when you come this place, Guda da Guda, these are the stories of this country. These are the stories of this country, Guda da Guda. And we don't want people, eh, just to come and see. We want you to feel. We also want our visitors, especially you Australians, to learn more about Australia and learn more about Australian Aboriginal cultural history. Because it is the oldest story on the planet. Hey. Yeah. Come from the oldest country, Australia. Unbroken. All right? Unbroken. The only place you can get that Aboriginal story from Australia is coming to look at some of our Aboriginal cultural tours all around this beautiful country. We represent Guda da Guda, the furthest western point in Australia. When you come here, you'll be traveling across many other different countries. Don't travel as a stranger. When you stop somewhere, always say your name and introduce yourself and say hello to our ancestors. You might seem silly like you're talking to nobody, but we believe you're talking to everybody. One thing we always believe as Aboriginal people is nature or country can talk, but also country listen. And we always believe that our old people or our ancestors are always listening and watching what we do, including here today, now. All right. Now, oh, that fish smells good. Fish smells good. Mm -mm. I'm going to get one. You want one? No. Okay, I'm going to have yours. All right, come this way. Mm -hmm. Can you smell them? Okay. You know what our name for this is? Mulgura. 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 Mulgura is mullet. This here is, this water here is pure, it's clean, unpolluted salt water. And these fish are also beautiful. Not like ones that are full of mud or anything like that you might find in the river systems. These here are beautiful. Lovely. I also um, sit on a, uh, an Aboriginal tour board called WATOC, or the Western Australia's Indigenous Tourism Operators Council. And uh, we've worked very, very hard with Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people, and also our partners both in Australia and overseas to develop and create authentic Aboriginal cultural tourism experiences. And this is the best time now for our fellow Australians to come out and experience what we've been experiencing. Don't just see country, but feel country. Put it inside you. All right? Because all of us, it's not about seeing nature, it's about feeling nature. From these little kids, these little males, to us adults. And my Ab Aboriginal brothers and sisters and my non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters in tourism, we open our hearts, we open our back doors and front doors, and we'd like to invite you guys to come and see Australia and to feel Australia like we see it and feel it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try one of these, Helena. Which one do you reckon? All right, this one here, I might. So, whoa. You gotta have not asbestos fingers or anything like that. Here, bud. So if you come in here, that's a bit hot. So just be careful. All right, so this is 
cooked in its own juices and all you're doing is like you're unwrapping a present. And this is my present. Oh, you can smell that, it's beautiful. And you're just peeling the skin off like that. So as I said, this fish is cooked in its own juices. Like that. Lovely, look at that. Beautiful white flesh. Mm. You want some? It's hot, babe. Hang on. So, the skin we can use as a little bit of a plate. There you go, bub. Try that. You want to try it? You got some? All right. Mm -mm. So, After this, I encourage you guys to hang around. Maybe go and get some popcorn. If you've got fish like this, grab that. Sit back and watch the next show coming live from the Sydney Opera House. Una wanga. Talk to you later. Catch ya. Bye. We'll see you again on the next video that we make. And hopefully we'll see you here. And you can see a beautiful West Australian sunset. Come and check it out. Woodah!